Hi everyone and welcome to this really quick video which can be used for AQA GCC Geography. What we're going to look at today is building design and how building design can be used to reduce the impacts of earthquakes. Now the sort of country that would specialise in building design which is going to withstand earthquakes is most certainly going to be HICs and I'm thinking of countries such as Japan. Leading world experts in building design. So let's dive straight in and see what they do with their buildings. So here we go. There's the ground and there is our building. There we go, lovely. Now, the first thing they do with their buildings is in the roof, they have either rolling weights or they can have a, a pendulum. So there's our pendulum. Now see the purpose of a pendulum is if the building, say for example, sways one way, the pendulum will provide a counterbalance by swaying in the opposite direction. So a building might go one way, the pendulum may swing it out, and hopefully the building will remain standing because the weight will act as a counterbalance. The second thing they do is buildings may have cross bracing. So this is steel bracing that runs throughout the building. It can run um, vertically up and down, but sometimes it runs horizontally in a diagonal way such as this. And this just provides extra support and structure to withstand the violent shaking from an earthquake. So there's our first way, number one. Let's, let's number these, that's number one, the pendulum. The second way is our cross bracing. And throughout this cross bracing, throughout the structure of a building, the building will have, there we go, these shock absorbers. So obviously a shock absorber does exactly what it is says on the tin. The shock absorber absorbs the energy from the actual earthquake itself. So number three, shock absorbers. Uh, the fourth way, let's say, well, I'm just gonna put in a, a window. Now obviously this building's gonna have thousands of windows, but there's our one window in this building. Now, when obviously an earthquake strikes, um, really tall skyscrapers, they will have these automatic shutters that will just automatically come down on all of their windows. So of course, a window it is made of glass and the last thing people want is an entire skyscraper of glass just falling down. So by having these automatic shutters that come down automatically when the ground begins to shake, if there is any glass to break, the glass is gonna fall on the inside of the building, not on the outside. So that's number four. Uh, number five, fifth way, let's just go outside of our building for a minute. Now, this can be quite difficult in some areas of Japan because Japan's got a, a small land area surface, they've got a high population, so it is quite congested. But generally speaking, when they do design these buildings to withstand earthquakes, they want to ensure that there's enough space around each building. So just in case the building did collapse, it's not gonna cause as much damage by falling onto another building, if that makes sense. So hopefully around the building, there's lots of space, just in case the building did collapse. And that'd be number five. And the sixth one, and the last uh, thing we're gonna look at is the deep reinforced foundations of the building. So we're gonna put all these deep foundations in. Now, of course, the deeper the foundations and the more secure the building's foundations, the less chance of that building toppling over, okay? So that's gonna be reason number six. So let's just go through those and um, very quickly. So number one, 
In the top of our buildings, we have a pendulum or we can have rolling weights. And the way that works is if the building sways one direction, the weight, the counterweight, will counterbalance it. So the building will remain standing. Uh, a second reason, buildings will have this uh, diagonal steel cross bracing, or sometimes the cross bracing can run down horizontally like that, vertically like that. Um, and obviously that just provides extra support and structure to once again, make sure the building remains stable and standing if there was a violent earth tremor. And attached to this steel bracing are these shock absorbers. Now obviously a building could have hundreds of these attached to them. And obviously the general purpose of a shock absorber is to do what it is called, and that is absorb the shock, absorb the energy of the actual earthquake itself. Um, number four, there's a one single window, but of course this building would have thousands of windows. And when the ground begins to shake, shutters will automatically come down over the glass. So if the glass did break, it wouldn't shower down on people on the, on the street level beneath the building. Uh, reason five is all around the building itself, there'll be a large amount of space. So if the building unfortunately did fall down, it wouldn't cause any more damage to any other buildings. And our last way of um, reducing the risk of earthquakes with building design is having very deep, secure foundations. So once again, just providing that stability, especially if the building's really tall, like they are in Japan, just to provide that extra stability to ensure the building remains standing. So there you have it. There are your six ways building design has been used to withstand the effects, the impacts of earth tremors, earthquakes, specifically used in countries such as Japan. Hope that's been useful. Uh, please do check out my other videos, um, all relevant to GCC geography. They will help with revision. Please do give this video a like if it has been useful for you and do subscribe um, for many videos to come in the future. Thanks for watching.